Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Walking Dead video. So I wanted to talk about something before getting into the Q&A here of this video. So first of all, thank you so much for posting all of your questions. If you do want to take part in the Q&A, I ask for questions every single week and then I'll usually do the Q&As on Wednesday. This week, there will obviously be a big focus on Comic-Con and whatnot. And then next week, we'll focus a lot more on the reaction to all the news that we learned and whatnot. So if you do want to take part in these Q&As, then definitely go join the Discord. The server name is Appetite for the Dead. I will leave a link in the description of this video but i wanted to talk about something here and i've talked about this before obviously i i've talked about andrew lincoln's return as rick grimes at some point i've quoted what he said before a couple times like simplistic survival horror but i really wanted to get into exactly what he said there and give some thoughts on it now because it's a very long quote and i, I do really want to i want to talk about this and talk about the whole idea of variant walkers and how this is likely going to be the next part of the story here because we do have like a new look at season two of daryl dixon at least for some of the newer walkers walkers and i also always just see people commenting stuff of like season two is not gonna happen andrew lincoln is done with rick grimes but like this quote literally was from last month the ones who live was already over for a couple of months and this is andrew lincoln talking about you know where he would like the story to go next gimple has been saying very similar things and it just makes sense that they have likely been talking about where the story would go next and that there is likely going to be a continuation of rick grimes's story we just don't know if it's going to be season two of the ones who live or if it's going to be a new series right i feel like it's best to talk about it like it's going to be season two of the ones who live instead of a new series because a new series it's kind of hard to say like we don't know if they're going to go down that route right like it makes sense that you know you've already established a show with the ones who live just renew that for season two right because the crm is still going to be a part of the next story that you talk about it makes sense if you're doing a continuation of the story then you just have the crm involved obviously but the interview was really interesting and i'll leave a link down below to the interview go and check it out like the quote really doesn't do it justice it's the interview like it happens around like five minutes into the interview anyways where he's asked about it's really just about the differences of filming in uh in georgia versus new jersey and andrew lincoln just sort of goes off on a tangent and and he says but you know i think if there were another opportunity to tell the story, I quite like the idea of pairing it really back down to basics again, and also put these characters in, you know, really sort of cranking up. This was much, and I should say, I'm trying to quote him exactly like word for word here, and so me reading exactly what he says isn't the same exact, you know, I'm not going to get the same exact tone of how he said it. So that's why I recommend definitely going to check out the interview. But anyways, this was much, the story that we were trying to tell was a much more epic love story. It's a bigger scale, it's quite grand of scale of sort of storytelling and world building, but essentially at the heart of it, it is this love story. But what I would like to do is, if I were to sort of direct it or something, would be, remember the scene where he lights the match going down the stairs when he's in the hospital? When Rick wakes up and it's terrifying and it's dark and all he has is that match and it keeps going out and he's hearing these noises and it's very disorientating. I want to bring it back to that, to sort of pare it right down, to bring it back down to the very simplistic survival horror that it essentially always was, and to make these characters, to maybe sort of hamstring them a little bit, to sort of tie one hand behind their back, because they're all such accomplished, extraordinary, competent, heroic characters, and I think to make them compromised again, and the audience would be really exciting. And that's exactly how a lot of fans are, are feeling right now, I feel like. Like, I, I think it was amazing to see Rick and Michonne reunite to get the family, you know, all together again and all of that. But the horror element to that show, like to the ones who left season one or whatever it's going to be, you know, definitely was missing, I would say. There was a lot to it that was missing. Like, it was definitely a different type of story. Like, as Andrew Lincoln says, it was this grand of a scale sort of storytelling and, like, world building. Because it very much built up the CRM. It was, like, this bigger world out there. And it was just, like, this really massive story in the Walking Dead universe that we don't normally get. And that isn't really essentially what the heart of the Walking Dead is. And going back to that, to that moment where Rick is literally just trying to leave the hospital. He has that match. It's the only thing he, he has. He doesn't know what these sounds are. He doesn't know what's going on. He keeps lighting the match, but it keeps going out. And it's just completely dark in the room. He's trying to find his way out. Like, just the very simplistic nature of that scene. Getting back to the roots of the show, I feel like, is something that 
makes sense to go in. You know, I feel like Andrew Lincoln, after watching The Ones Who Live, I don't even know if he watched it all, but after doing that story, I could see how he might be like, yeah, now I want to do some of the cool stuff. You know what I mean? Like some of the survival stuff, you know, killing walkers and, and all the really fun, you know, cool stuff with The Walking Dead that was kind of not really missing because everything was just so epic and this bigger world story, right? Where zombies weren't really a, a big threat really in that world. And I really wanted to talk about this because a lot of people say that, you know, Andrew Lincoln's never coming back. Rick Grimes' story is done. And you just read his comments on this here. This happened a month ago. This was exactly, or about a month and a half ago now. Like, and at that point, that was what, two months, two or three months or something like that, maybe closer to two months. I don't know what it was. Two, three months anyways, after the ones who live ended, to me, when I read these comments, it seems like he knows or he has a feeling of like where he would like the story to go next. And he wants it to be a bit more simpler of a story. He doesn't really want the CRM to be like this big, huge story out there and and have it be this, this whole thing, right? And that's why I would say don't have any doubt that he'll come back. Like, I feel pretty confident that he will come back. And I think the way that they're going to announce a lot of this is that at Comic-Con, I don't know if it's going to be this year. It might be next year in 2025 because I don't know when the announcement's going to be coming. But I think they're going to announce, you know, the, the a season two or like a new series first. They'll announce that first. And then they'll get into, you know, the whole process of like, because they're going to write everything first, because I know Andrew Lincoln, in order to sign on and do any of that, he wants to know what the story is going to be. So maybe not everything is completely written, but like the idea of where the story is going to go and and all of that, I feel like is going to be, you know, somewhat just finished. And they have an idea of like, this is where it's going to start. The story is going to be set in, in this place here. And this is where we're going to end the story. I think if, if they go to Andrew Lincoln with something like that and, you know, they talk to him about like, this is where Rick's story is going to go and all of that, then I could totally see him being very excited about that and actually agreeing to, you know, sign on to, I guess, this new season or to the new series. And to me, there's a chance maybe that they could announce something at Comic-Con this year, but I feel like Comic-Con 2025, they'll announce something. Maybe the show comes out in 2026 or 2027, and then, you know, they're going to write for a lot of that year. Early 2026, they'll likely film or something like that, and then maybe the show comes out in 2027, right? Or maybe it's like a year later because maybe some more time still needs to pass. I'm not entirely sure. Again, the whole question of when, that's the hardest thing to answer. Like, to me, when you look at their comments here, like Andrew Lincoln's, uh, Denai Carrera's, and Scott Gimple's, like, they're very much, like, not done, you know, playing their characters. And Gimple's not done writing the story, obviously. And it's, like, the complete opposite of, again, being done with their story here. So I really do believe that it's going to happen. Like, it's going to happen at some point. It is just a matter of when. And that's the hard part to, to sort of figure out. And that's why Comic-Con and all these interviews that Scott Gimple is going to do or Andrew Lincoln and Denai Guerrero, whenever they do other interviews for like other projects and whatnot, then we can gather whatever information they say then, right? And I think that's really what it comes down to now is just when. And, you know, hopefully everything goes well because obviously there could be a hiccup where like something bad happens in terms of writing the story or this and that or maybe they just don't care anymore or whatever. But it took them six years last time and they still eventually told the story here. They they do seem very like they know where this is going here. And again, I feel like for both of them, for Denai Guerrera and for Andrew Lincoln, playing Michonne and Rick, those are the biggest characters that they've ever played. Like, you could argue that Denai Guerrero did play a bigger character in uh, in Marvel, but I would say probably not. Like, the movies are bigger, the Marvel movies are bigger, but Michonne as a character, I would say, is much more well-known to everybody. And so these are the biggest characters that they've ever played. And I just look at that and I'm like, well, I just think that it makes sense that based off of everything that they're saying, they're not going to completely shut down playing these characters because again they also get paid a lot for playing rick and michonne right like that, that's also a whole other part to it i'm not saying that they're not going to get paid doing other things but obviously playing rick and michonne you're going to get paid a lot for, for playing those characters. So that's a whole other aspect to this that a lot of people also ignore as well, right? Like people have to work. People need to make a living and whatnot, right? And so that's also a big part of it too, right? Like that's a big part of, of all of that there. So I really do think that they will come back at some point. It's just a matter of when. And that's why Comic-Con in just two days from now is really going to be fascinating for me because it's just how Gimple is going to likely respond to that question because I'm sure he's going to get asked, right? Like, he will get asked that question and it's just you know how does he respond and if it's the same exact thing of like well you know i hope that we do do something at some point like i hope that that's not the end but again it's not up to me completely like if it's the same sort of response like that then we know that you know maybe they are writing it behind the scenes but we're basically in the same place it's just sort of 
yeah, we don't know. And we might have to wait till Comic-Con 2025 for any sort of official announcement at all. If it's not that, you know, and, and if he actually says something like, you know, we've been talking a lot more of this than that, but, you know, we can't say anything. That already is a big update, right? Because you're confirming now that you're actually talking about something. So... I, I do think that it's going to happen at some point here. And the reason why that I, I actually I added the walkers from uh, Daryl Dixon season two, like in the thumbnail was because I feel like that's really the best direction to go in here. And you don't have to make it such a big scale in terms of you have variant walkers everywhere. But I mean, I think you could still do that. Like the way I'm picturing, you know, Rick Grimes' story. And again, I'll break down the walkers and the new look and all of that. And I'll talk about that more in a Daryl Dixon video later. But I think the way they could do this, you know, because Andrew Lincoln was talking about doing, you know, more simplistic survival horror. I think at some point the variant walkers could come from France to America. And then I think, you know, you don't have to have it where the variant walkers are taking over America completely. Like they're everywhere, but maybe they get word that this is happening somewhere. And so Rick is trying to, to stop that, right? Maybe that's how Rick reunites with Daryl at some point, but you could just really do more of a simple story where there's just this one location, you know, maybe you can do a city or something like that, but basically the variant walkers are chasing them and, you know, maybe they have to run into buildings and whatnot and hide. I think it would be kind of cool to see Rick and Daryl and everyone else run into a city at nighttime and have them, you know, running up the building to get to a rooftop just because that's very, it's very reminiscent of season one, right? Of The Walking Dead when Rick and everyone were trapped on rooftops trying to get away from walkers, right? So it would just be really cool because you're dealing with a new threat. That's like the first thing you go and do. It would be kind of a nice callback to that moment. And with the variant walkers, again, it adds that whole new threat level there where you can't really just kill a walker normally. I mean, we saw Daryl try to fight one and he had a hard time with it, right? And luckily, that walker actually fought the other walker because I don't even know if Daryl would have stood a chance there. But if they all don't actually fight each other and they all go after like humans like specifically, that is going to be... That's terrifying, right? And so I think that's where you go next with this. And that is really what I want. I want Rick and Daryl on a rooftop, you know, hiding from variant walkers trying to get away. Maybe the CRM comes and saves them. That would be really cool as well, right? Because maybe the variant walkers are actually starting to make their way up. And obviously, if there's a door there, they're not going to just turn the doorknob and like, you know, eventually break through. Like, they're going to break through immediately. Like, they're going to completely tear that door down like right away. So... I think that it would be really exciting to see something like that. You know, the CRM comes and saves Rick and Daryl, or maybe there's a lot more people there, but they don't save Rick and Daryl immediately. Like they're forced to go somewhere else, but they save other people that are on the roof. Like there's just so much that you can do there. And then you have Rick and Daryl together again, reunited, and you're telling a story with them because that's the one thing that, you know, that I learned with the ones who live anyways, is that they weren't going to build up to Rick and Michonne's reunion and have that the very end scene we're going to see more of a story with them. And so that's where, you know, like where the ones who have ended, you had them like reunite with their family. That's why I want scenes with all of them together, because I just think that that would be really amazing, right? Like we had so many scenes with Rick and Michonne after they reunited. That was just really incredible to see again. And so I want that also with Rick and Daryl as well. Rick and Daryl to see each other maybe in the first episode or two. And then afterwards, they basically like they're together the entire season. And we have this really amazing Rick and Daryl story, right? I mean, obviously there will be other characters, but the focus is going to be on Rick and Daryl. Like if you ask anyone right now, like, what's the reunion that you want the most? Everyone says Rick and Daryl. So, yeah, I think this is probably going to be where they go next year. But let's get into the Q&A here because, uh, yeah, I definitely should at this point here. I've already been talking about this for way too long. So, uh, Q&A, what do you want the most from Marvel for Comic-Con? I want them to announce, I don't even really know what, like, a Blade movie would be really amazing. I know they've already announced that, but, like... I just don't know what's happening with that movie right now. It seems like the production for that movie is is just in a very weird place right now. So I would like them to, you know, maybe confirm some more details with that. Because Blade, like, to me, is one of my favorite Marvel characters out there. I think um, an X-Men movie would be really incredible. I think, you know, an X-Men movie with Hugh Jackman coming back to play uh, Wolverine, I think, would be really amazing. Uh, I don't really know what else. Like, I just want some clear directions here and more movie announcements than like tv show announcements on disney plus q a if you can make a spinoff with any character of any of the shows who would it be and where would it be set i think i would have to choose i mean off the top of my head right now and again this is always going to change every single day but the way i feel right now i guess i would have to say morgan 
I know he was already on Fear the Walking Dead, but to me, that wasn't really a Morgan spinoff. Like, yes, the story revolved around him a lot, but, like, he didn't get a spinoff of this quality, right? Like, he got a spinoff with the Fear the Walking Dead showrunners and that story. So he didn't really get a proper story there. So I would love to get a proper, like, Morgan spinoff. And it could be set in Alexandria or something like that. Like, I think that'd be really cool. Q&A, if The Once You Live Season 2 is confirmed, would you want Elizabeth Kublik to possibly return as a major villain for Season 2 since she seemed to be very loyal to Major General Beale and maybe possibly working beside Beale's son? I just don't know. Like, I guess I wouldn't mind it. If they announced all of that, and, you know, for me, I wouldn't mind it. Like, I, I think that story could be really exciting. I just don't know if they really want to, you know, do any story like that because, again, Andrew Lincoln, right, like he literally just said, or I just literally read what he said, that he wants it to be a little bit more simpler than the way it was. And I really feel like that was the motivation for ending the CRM arc. Like, I think they really wanted to just like completely end that story. This way, if they were to do a season two, they would actually tell the story that they really want to tell. I'm not saying that they didn't want to tell the CRM story, but it does feel like, and again, it's just my opinion, but it does feel like they weren't the biggest fans of the CRM arc and just that whole thing. Like, obviously, a lot of it was really cool and all that. I'm sure they enjoyed a lot of that. But having it be this continuing thing going from season to season and all that, I think that that's something that I don't know if Andrew Lincoln would have wanted, you know, to have his character constantly connected to the CRM for just like forever. Q&A, could The Walking Dead ever go back to 10 or 12 episode seasons? Also, are you enjoying House of the Dragon so far? And will you consider reviewing the other spinoffs if they are good? Love all you do and love The Walking Dead and Marvel content. Thank you so much. So in terms of House of the Dragon, I have been enjoying uh, watching it. I haven't really been that excited about the story too, too much. You know, definitely after episode six, I was just like, well, the story is like you can sort of predict where it's going for episode eight. So it just feels like there's not going to be a lot of stuff happening here until episode eight. And so it does just kind of feel like, you know, there's a big moment in episode four. Now there's going to be a big moment in episode eight. And so I'm just... I'm not the most excited about it right now. I am enjoying it, and I'm going to watch every single week right now and finish up the season. But yeah, I mean, I will review the other spinoffs as well. Like, I'm really excited for A Night in the Seven Kingdoms. I think that could be a really incredible show. But in terms of could The Walking Dead ever go back to 10 or 12 episode seasons, I think that 10 episodes make sense. It really, like, honestly, it's kind of unpredictable. I'm not going to say no. Because that's just sort of, you know, that's more recency bias as well, because that's just where things are at right now. Like right now, everything is going, you know, six episodes, eight episodes, maybe 10 episodes. Though I will say not a lot of stuff is six episodes anymore. I think they were doing that for a bit. But things are starting to go to like eight episodes now, I've noticed. Like eight to ten episodes. So it's like picking back up a little bit. I don't know about 16 episodes or like 22 episodes because obviously a lot of shows used to do that for a very long time, right? Always 22 episodes per season or whatever. The Walking Dead's always been like 16 episodes. So in terms of increasing back to that, it all depends on how people watch TV. And I think that that's just something that we're going to have to wait and see, right? Like, I, I just don't know where that's going to go overall. You know, are people going to keep binging shows still? Because I feel like binging shows, that's a reason why you don't do like 16 episodes or 22 episodes or whatever right like i think that's why you have it more like eight to ten episodes so i don't know we'll have to wait and see i think that's more of a thing that will change in the future at some point i mean i'm sure i'll go back to it at some point and then i'll eventually go back down to eight or ten episodes q a will you stream san diego comic-con the walking dead panel like last year and if the answer is yes will it be on twitch so I am going to be streaming uh, for Comic-Con. I don't know the exact times yet. I'm going to work that out. But my plan is I'm going to be live streaming and reacting to all the news and the trailer and everything on Twitch. So again, I'll announce more details luckily tomorrow or the day after or whatever, like just beforehand. But I'm also going to be streaming on YouTube as well. I'll be streaming on YouTube beforehand for a little bit, not reacting to anything or whatever, but just sort of, you know, answering questions from you guys and just talking about The Walking Dead and all of that because I haven't done a live stream on here in a while. So. So yeah, that, that's the plan. But yes, I will be for sure streaming my reaction and whatnot. And uh, yeah, doing a live Q&A with all of you guys, which is going to be a lot of fun. I'm so, so excited. So post all your thoughts down below. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.